Welcome back to Football Daily, where today we're looking at 10 footballers who are impossible to hate. 10. Juan Mata A cultured player who loves to write poetry and go backpacking in the summer holidays, Juan Mata is an unconventional footballer. The Spaniard was studying for two degrees when he arrived at Chelsea in 2011, won the Champions League in his first campaign and was named the Blues Player of the Year two seasons running. In the summer of 2017, Mata decided to use his success for the greater good. The Man United midfielder had previously complained about footballers living in a bubble, so he created the Common Goal Initiative, pledging 1% of his earnings to charity. That works out at over £70,000 a year, and since the scheme was launched, other stars have signed up, including Giorgio Chiellini, Mats Hummels and Shinji Kagawa. Mata's aim is for 1% of all money generated by football to go to charity one day. If he manages it, then not only will he have changed the game, he may well have changed the world too. 9. Santi Cazorla Tiny Santi Cazorla is one of Arsene Wenger's best signings. Costing around £13 million when he signed from Malaga in 2012, the Spaniard has been a joy to watch, a brilliant two-footed dribbler who racked up 12 goals and 11 assists in his first Premier League campaign. Previously a left winger or an attacking midfielder, Cazorla aged brilliantly into a deeper role, becoming Arsenal's midfield metronome. Between 2014 and 2016, the Gunners won 66% of their league matches he started, compared to just 39% without him. However, Santi has fallen victim to the Arsenal curse, finding himself sidelined repeatedly with injuries. In 2017, it was revealed that the playmaker had had eight surgeries to correct an Achilles issue, and an infection had eaten away at the tendon in his ankle. Doctors had to take a section of skin from his arm, including half a tattoo, to graft over the wound, and told the midfielder he'd be lucky to walk again. It'd be a crying shame if we never saw the little wizard light up the Emirates again. 8. Gianfranco Zola It was probably a lot easier to like Chelsea players in the late 90s, when the Blues hadn't won a league in over 40 years and fourth place was the limit of their ambitions. Their star attacker was Italian Gianfranco Zola, who was an inch shorter than Lionel Messi and had won Serie A with Napoli in 1990. In Naples, Zola was seen as the heir to Maradona and would stay after training to have free kick and penalty competitions with the icon himself. So when the Italian arrived at Stamford Bridge in 1996, he was a novelty, a gifted player with flair in a team previously characterised by dogged workmen like Dennis Wise. The Blues had finished 11th the year before Zola signed, but the forward lit up the league with his amazing dribbling and set pieces, taking the Blues to the Champions League for the first time in 1999 and winning admirers everywhere for his skill and gentlemanly conduct. Zola had made Chelsea exciting again. He subsequently left for Cagliari at the age of 36, though Roman Abramovich offered to buy the Sardinian club to get Zola to stay in London and scored 13 goals in his first season to return the Sardinians to Serie A, one of football's great entertainers. 7. Vincent Company When Vinnie Company arrived at Man City in 2008, the Sky Blues hadn't won a title in 40 years. Nearly a decade later, the Citizens have been champions twice and reached the Champions League semi-finals while attracting the world's best manager to the club. Company is the model captain. A commanding defender who even Man United fans have to rate highly, the Belgian is intelligent and sophisticated, speaking four languages, undertaking a business degree during his time in Manchester and always showing up stupid pundits whenever he appears on TV. Company is a keen follower of politics and environmental issues and an ambassador for SOS Children, an organisation which works for orphan kids in the Congo where Company's father was born. Though frequent injuries have restricted him to just 28 league games since 2015, the centre-back has been busy in his downtime, buying a Belgian third division club as a way to give troubled teenagers an opportunity to better themselves through football. The perfect example to the youngsters he's trying to help. 6. Juninho The second Brazilian to play in the Premier League, Juninho didn't join Arsenal or Man U or Chelsea in 1995, but Middlesbrough, fresh from winning the Copa Libertadores with Sao Paulo. Nicknamed the Little Flea for his 5 foot 5 frame, Juninho was just 22 and endeared himself to the fans immediately by moving his parents to the northeast of England. Unlike most players, Juninho seemed to genuinely love Barra, enjoying three spells with the T-Siders, as well as a period with Atletico Madrid. The Colchoneros paid £12 million to play the tricky midfielder behind Christian Vieri, making him the seventh most expensive player ever. But it was at Riverside where he found a home, crying when the club was relegated in 1997 and returning after the World Cup to help them to their only major honour in their history, the 2004 League Cup. 
he said that triumph meant more to him than being a world champion. Able to dribble, score and split defenders with a wand of a right foot, Juninho mesmerised the Middlesbrough faithful and was one of the first superstars to join a mid-table Premier League side, paving the way for JJ Okocha, Paolo Di Canio and Dimitri Payet. If the Premier League is the most watchable in the world, some of the credit has to go to the little fella from Sao Paulo. 5. Xavi Alonso Only Xavi Alonso could play for Liverpool, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich and still not be considered a twat. With his pinpoint passing and intelligent reading of the game, Alonso was a world-class midfielder between 2004 and 2017, winning four titles, a second Champions League and a second European Championship after the age of 30. Personifying class on and off the pitch, Alonso speaks four languages and began giving interviews in German after two months after joining Bayern. His unflashy, selfless style of play saw him become the most important player under Benitez, Mourinho, Ancelotti and Guardiola and he won 114 caps for Spain, despite competition from Xavi, Iniesta and Busquets, to name just three. Steven Gerrard selected Alonso as the best midfielder he'd ever played with, while Iron Robben described him as a great human being and a superb professional. A quiet legend of the modern era who showed it doesn't matter how slow you are if your brain was quick enough. 4. Peter Crouch Peter Crouch may not be the world's most elegant player, but the former England international's sense of humour about himself has made him a fan favourite. Once, when he was asked what he'd be if he wasn't a footballer, Crouch did a virgin, and his robot dance showed that unlike some of his colleagues, the striker doesn't care about looking cool. And he has hardly been a useless player. Crouch has over 100 Premier League goals, more than Didier Drogba, and more assists in the division than David Beckham, Paul Scholes or Dennis Bergkamp. Now heading into his 30s, Crouch could complain about the lack of match minutes, but instead has devoted his free time to raising money for the victims of Grenfell Tower Fire, which took place five miles from the player's childhood home. Sadly for the big man, his only major trophies are the FA Cup and Community Shield, though he did play in the 2007 Champions League final, everyone's favourite lovable underdog. 3. Eric Abidal In a nine-year period between 2004 and 2013, Frenchman Eric Abidal won seven titles, as well as a pair of Champions Leagues. He also appeared in the 2006 World Cup final, establishing himself as one of the best left-backs in the world. But while huge success often incurs the hatred of rival fans, Abidal's fight for his life won the support and sympathy of all supporters. The defender was diagnosed with a cancerous tumour of the liver in 2011, undergoing surgery in the middle of a season. But under three months later, Abadal was starting for Barca in the Champions League final. And when the game ended in a 3-1 victory, Carlos Puyol handed his teammate the captain's armband, allowing the former Leon man to lift the trophy first. Unfortunately, Abadal's disease returned, and he was forced to take a year out following a liver transplant. But rather than becoming self-centred, Abadal's hardship inspired him to help others. He has since set up a charity supporting children with long-term illnesses and their families. Two. David Beckham. Although he retired from the game in 2013, there are few faces more recognisable in football than David Beckham's. Once the world's most marketable player, Beckham won 10 titles with Manchester United, Real Madrid, LA Galaxy and Paris Saint-Germain, before retiring and becoming an ambassador for UNICEF. During his playing days, Beckham was famed for his hard work and commitment to the team, with Alex Ferguson saying the midfielder would spend hours after training practising his free kicks and long passes and the former England captain continued his attitude into charity work. While playing for the Parisians, Beckham donated his entire £3.4 million salary to a French children's charity, and he has worked with Help the Heroes, Malaria No More and various AIDS organisations, as well as running a foundation for his wife Victoria. Beckham did come into criticism though in 2017, when leaked emails revealed his anger at being overlooked for a knighthood, with the star describing the selectors as c and the decision as a f***ing disgrace. Still, after raising millions for those in need around the world, it's hard to argue he doesn't deserve one. 1. Andrea Pirlo The only football player to have a better beer than Xavi Alonso, Andrea Pirlo did what every other player aspires to do. He always looked effortless. Alongside Alonso, Xavi and Scholes, Pirlo was one of the defining registers of the modern era, a world-class athlete in the body of an Italian bookshop owner. Pirlo won six titles, the World Cup and the Champions League twice and was chosen as Serie A Player of the Year three times, between the ages of 33 and 35. His skill at controlling a game saw him nicknamed Professor, The Architect, The Maestro and Mozart, 
and he arguably did more than anyone else to turn football from a fight in the mud into a genuinely beautiful game. Pirlo described warm-ups as masturbation for conditional coaches and for the last 10 years has been running his very own vineyard in the most on-brand move ever. And in 2015, he broke the heart of every football fan, crying as Juventus lost the Champions League final. But despite the tears, when the Barca team was presented their trophy minutes later, only one Juventus player was clapping. Football's greatest gentleman, Andrea Pirlo. Congratulations, you got to the end of the video. Your prize, another lovely video. And as always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe.